Kelly Barlow Creations. If you're new to my channel and you're stopping by for the first time, thank you for stopping by. Welcome to my channel. Stick around a while by clicking that red button for more crafting on a budget, more everything on a budget videos to come. And if you click it again when the bell appears, YouTube should notify you every time I upload a new video, depending on the option that you choose in the drop down menu of the bell. If you're interested in following me on social media, you can find those links in the description box below. So what do I have going on for you for today? Oh my word, today I am so excited about this DIY because I am gonna be showing you how to make these rustic farmhouse trucks. These are so easy and budget friendly to make. They're gonna cost you under $5 to make and the outcome it's rustic and farmhouse. Did I say that yet? Because it really is. This is a very versatile piece. So if that rustic farmhouse feel just isn't for you, you can very easily do it to suit your decor style just by switching up the colors and the patterns. This DIY is one that I designed solely on my own from start to finish. I started off by just really getting inspiration for this piece from a piece I guess a tin truck actually that I picked up at Walmart right around Easter time and I thought wow I love that truck but how easy would it be to make this truck and so I got to pulling out my pencil and paper and I started designing and this is what I came up with. I can't wait to show you this. I am really proud of this design and super excited about it. And I think it's one you're really gonna like. So let me quit my gabbing, let's jump into it, and let me show you just how easily you too can make this truck on a budget for under $5. Once you make one, I'm telling you, you're gonna wanna make five or six just like I did. Let's get to it. Alrighty, so getting started, I'm going to give you a sneak peek, a closer look at this truck that I've designed that I want to show you how to make. It's quick, easy, and did I say it's budget friendly? Come on, do this with me. I'm going to use a solid cardstock as my base cardstock, and as you can see, I am doing the red truck. And so this piece is going to measure out at 10 and a half inches long by six and a quarter inches wide. There is some scoring involved, so I'm going to start off by scoring on the 10 and a half inch side, and I'm gonna score at two and three quarter inches. Then I'm gonna rotate to the six and a quarter inch side, and I'm gonna score again at two and three quarter inches. I'm gonna rotate again to the 10 and a half inch side, and again, and lastly, I'm gonna score at two and three quarters, and that was scoring at two and three quarters on three sides, both short sides and one long side. Now I'm gonna rotate again to the six and a quarter inch side. Now this side we don't have any scoring lines on, but we're gonna score at a half an inch on this side. And that is all the scoring that is needed. With this piece, there aren't too many pieces that need to be cut away, but there are some slits that need to be made. Now on this piece, you have your half inch scoring piece here at the top, and then you've got these larger pieces here at the bottom. On this half inch scoring line, you're gonna see that you have a scoring line here that meets and a scoring line here that meets. We're gonna cut a slit in there on each side, but we're gonna do it at an angle, like we're taking a piece of pizza out. So it looks like this. And so on this scoring line right here, we're gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna cut at an angle on both sides of the scoring line. Leaving us with this. And on this end here, I'm gonna go ahead and taper in that end. And on this end here, I'm gonna go ahead and taper in that end, leaving us with this. We've got this scoring line here that goes across. We're just gonna cut a slit in that. And when we cut the slit, we're gonna use this scoring line as our guide to stop because we only need to fold this flap in to make our hood. So on this side, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna cut the slit We can also taper this in just a bit, which is going to help give us cleaner edges. 
And when you taper it, you want to taper it on this piece, not this piece, this flap here, not the one that's closest to the half inch fold, because then you'll have an awkward line. This piece is going to go inside. And so this is the piece, this bottom piece that you want to taper if you're going to taper. This is what you should be left with. So we're going to go ahead and fold in all of our scoring lines here. Flipping it back over on these tabs here, we're gonna place some adhesive tape and we're gonna go as close to the scoring line as we can. And I'm gonna do two rows of adhesive. And on these bottom tabs here, closest to the scoring line, I'm gonna put more adhesive. I'm gonna put some on the end and I'm also gonna hit the middle of it as well, just to kind of keep this together good. And I'm gonna do it on this side as well, closest to the scoring line, on the end, and an X here. Now all that's left to do is really just put this piece together. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this bottom flap here and fold it up and in and fold this one down. like so, and on this side, I'm gonna do the same thing, just fold it in and fold this one down, lining up our edges nicely here. Then we've got these half inch pieces that are going to fold down, but we're not gonna attach this to anything yet because this is going to attach to the cab of the truck. And so you can see that these tabs here just fold in like that, and this is going to then attach just like this. So this piece is this piece and it's gonna attach to the cab. Again, going with my solid cardstock in the color of red. And this piece is going to measure out at seven and a quarter inches by 10 and a half. On the 10 and a half inch side, we're gonna score at a half inch. We're gonna score at two and three quarter inches again at seven and three quarter inches. And lastly on this side at 10 inches. We're gonna rotate to the seven and a quarter inch side. And on this side, we're gonna score at a half an inch, two and a quarter inches. And lastly at four inches. With this piece here, you're gonna see that you have a half inch scoring section here, a half inch scoring section at the top, and a half inch scoring section along this side. There is not one at the bottom. You wanna have the 10 and a half inch side up that has the half inch scoring area. And we're gonna cut away a couple of pieces. Now you're gonna see that you have this box here. And in this first box on each side, you've got the half inch scoring lines. We're gonna rotate to this box and we're not gonna cut this box fully out. We're gonna leave about a half an inch of this box. So you'll see that here is the scoring line. We're gonna cut about a half inch up from the scoring line and we're gonna cut that piece out. And so you'll be left with this half inch piece here we're gonna continue on to cut a slit right there on the scoring line, which is then in turn giving us a tab. We're gonna do the same thing on this side. We're gonna cut up a half an inch, just eyeballing it from that scoring line. And then we're gonna cut this piece out using the scoring line as our guide. Once we've cut that piece out, we're gonna continue on with that scoring line and just cut a slit. Now where this slit is that we just made, we're gonna taper it in on both sides. We're also gonna taper in this half inch tab here. Now when you see half inch tabs, those are typically the pieces that are gonna attach things or close a box up. That's what those half inch areas are for. And so we're gonna cut that at an angle and taper it in so you should be left with that. And then here we have got this half inch section here and here, but we've got this small box on the corner. 
that box needs to come out. So we're gonna go ahead and just cut that small box out on both sides. So you should be left with that, but we need to taper in this edge, this edge, this edge, this edge, this one, and this one, just to give our folds nice clean folds. Lastly, all we need to do to this piece is we need to cut a slit here and a slit here because this is actually the roof of the cab and this is the windshield and these are the doors. So this would be the door, this would be the window, the door, the window, the windshield, and the roof of the cab. And so we're gonna go ahead and cut a slit right where the window would be here on each side so we can close our door. Now let's close this up and put this together. I'm gonna go ahead again and fold in all of my scoring lines. Now for this part, I'm not gonna say it's super confusing, but if you follow along with me, you'll see where I'm going with it. Now, when we fold these pieces in and we kind of close our door, you're gonna see that I wanted my windshield to be at an angle. But by having it at an angle, we are left with this triangle piece here on each side of this front windshield. I didn't want it to be squared. I really wanted it at an angle. So to get rid of this triangle piece here, if we just lay down our piece here and we take our pencil and just kind of mark a line here and then go up on the tab, we're not gonna cut that away. We're only gonna cut the tab part away, but we're gonna fold this in to close it up so we don't have a gap in between our windshield and our door. So just by placing the roof together, just like so, we can go ahead and flip this over and mark this piece here, just like so. So we've got these pencil lines here that we just made. Up here on the half inch tab, we're gonna cut that little piece away, but we're gonna leave this angle here because again, we want to be able to close up that area. So I'm just gonna snip a little piece away from the tab using the scoring line as a guide and the pencil mark that I made. And that's gonna leave us with this. See, and we've got that triangle there. And so I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. I promise you it isn't confusing if you just follow along with me. So we've got those two triangles there. I'm gonna take something that's got a nice hard edge. I'm gonna place it right along my pencil mark and I'm gonna fold this tab in just like so. Then I'm gonna come over to this side and I'm gonna do the same thing on this side folding in that angle there. And so this is what you should be left with. We're gonna go ahead and place this down and now it's time to place some adhesive. So I'm gonna place my adhesive along this half inch tab here, right along the scoring line. This half inch tab here, we're gonna place some adhesive on this triangle piece that we just folded. Some adhesive on this tab. Again, on the triangle on the other side, this tab right here, and lastly, this half inch tab here. Now all that's left to do is to close up the cap of our truck and it's very easy to do if you start off with those triangles that we traced with our pencil and just lining up your windshield with the fold there just like so. And you'll see just how I did that just like so and then doing the other side as well, and it really will just come together after that. You line up that fold with the windshield, 
And if you have extra glue, it'll just rub right off just like that. Now I'm gonna take and just fold in these two tabs and pull this piece down. And that is the roof of our cab. See how we're getting that together? And so we've got our windshield, we've got our doors on each side, and now all that's left to do is just to kind of fold this down, but we need a piece for this back piece. For this back piece, to cover it, we're gonna use a five by five inch piece of solid cardstock. And so if you just kind of take and line your piece up with the top half inch tab, it's gonna close together nicely. And there we have just made the cab of our truck. Now we can take the hood and we can line it up. Here is our windshield and the roof. This is the back where the bed is gonna go. On this front piece, we can go ahead and line up the hood of our truck. That was the hardest part of this. Now all that's left is to do the bed of the truck and that's gonna take like two minutes. It's gonna be so easy. Really, I think the hardest part of this is the cab, but if you just kind of follow along with me and pause and uh, watch what I'm doing, I think you should be able to do this pretty easily. For the bed of the truck, again, I'm using a solid piece of cardstock and this piece measures out at nine and a quarter by eight and a half inches. We're gonna start off by scoring on the nine and a quarter inch side. And on this side, we are going to score at one and three quarters, which is right here, and seven and a half. Rotating it to the eight and a half inch side, we are gonna score at one and three quarters, and six and three quarters. With this one, we've got these four squares on each corner. We're gonna cut a slit in each of those and we're gonna taper them in. But we wanna taper in the tabs themselves, not the longer rectangle, the shorter one, because if you taper in this one, it's gonna look funny on the outside. And so you wanna just taper in this tab here I'm gonna fold in my scoring lines here. And while my tabs are folded in, I'm gonna go ahead and hit them with some adhesive, going real close to that scoring line and the inside of the tab. And now just close up the bed of our truck by folding the tabs in, lining up those edges nicely on all four points. And there we go. There is the bed of our truck. How easy is that? And so this piece is gonna go right to the back here, just like so. So in order to attach that, we're gonna add some adhesive, quite a bit of adhesive here to the back here, this long edge. And then we can just line it up right back here, just like so. And there we have got our truck. To embellish this red truck, I am using this heavy duty wood cardstock that came in my subscriber mail that I was just looking for an excuse to use. I'm gonna start off with the grill of the truck. This decorative cardstock measures out at four and a half inches long by two and a half inches wide. For the hood here, this piece measures out at four and a half inches long by two and three quarter inches wide. And with this piece, I'm pushing it all the way up against this edge here, just so it's framed around these three edges. For the windshield, the roof, 
and the tailgate. I've got three pieces that measure out at one and a quarter inches wide by four and a half inches long. For the bed of the truck on the sides here, we've got two more pieces that measure out at one and a quarter inch wide by five and a quarter inches long. We've got two pieces for the door panels that measure out at two and three quarter inches long by two inches wide. For the wheel wells, we've got two pieces that measure out at two and three quarters by two and a half inches. And lastly, for this back piece here, I've cut a piece that measures out at four and three quarters by four and three quarters. For the bed of the truck, I wanted to put like a wood enclosure, I guess you could say, or a wood fence. And so to do that, I'm gonna use the scraps from this decorative paper that I used here. For the fencing of the back of the truck, I'm using cardstock. Now, some of you may be saying, why not just use popsicle sticks? I tried to use popsicle sticks and it was just too heavy. And so, I figured that by making my own, I could easily do it. I have plenty of scrap paper left over and it would be lighter. And so we're gonna start off with this fence and you're gonna need six pieces that measure out at one half inch wide by three and a half inches long. Now this next step is totally optional, but I'm gonna take my corner rounder and I'm gonna round one end of the popsicle stick because I thought that it would look kind of cool just to have some rounded corners. And so just by rounding it, that is completely optional. We've got the square end here, we've got the rounded end here. And on these, these are the posts. So that's why I'm only doing one end because this is the end that's gonna be up out of the truck. And so just by placing a bit of hot glue on the bottom edge here, the edge we didn't round, if you did round them, and I'm gonna place it right along the inside of the bed of the truck there. Before I do the crossbars, I'm gonna take a scrap piece and just measure out about a half an inch here. I'm gonna fold it in half. I'm gonna take this piece, I'm gonna hot glue it, attaching these two posts together just like so, just to keep them together so they're not separating. That's gonna help these to stand nicely. You can see how these two here kinda come apart, but then when I put the piece there, these two stay together. And so that's just one of those fine tuning things that I like to do. Now we can place the crossbars and on the two longer sides, you're gonna need four pieces that measure out at a half an inch wide by five and three quarters. With these, I'm gonna go ahead and place some hot glue on the back side on each end. Just a dot is all you need. We don't need a whole stick as Kayla would put it, just a dot. For the back end here, these two pieces are gonna measure out at a half inch again by four and three quarter inches long. Okay, so are we loving the way this is turning out so far? Look at how fun that is. And it's made out of paper and it's so easy to do. It really is, I promise you. Our truck needs windows and tires and some other minor embellishments. Now you can try to do these embellishments by hand using some black cardstock if you want. And for the tires, I have cut out eight 
two inch circles. Now I do have a circle punch, but you can very easily trace a cup or a lid of some sort to get this. Now I've done eight because I wanted to do it too thick just to give the tires a bit more stability, I guess, if you will. And so instead of using tape, I'm going to use some hot glue to glue these pieces together because again, I think that the hot glue is just going to add more stability. And so just by gluing two of them together, we're going to get a thicker tire. And for this, I just thought that it would be really fun to come up with an embellishment pack for a grill, maybe the front windshield, this back window, maybe a bumper and some hubcaps for the tires, maybe a doorknob and whatnot, side windows. And so Linda and I designed this embellishment pack that um, is available in her Etsy store. And this is everything that you will need to complete the truck the way I'm doing it today. If you wanna make your own, I say get creative and do it. We've got four hubcaps here, two headlights, two door decals, the back bumper with, I guess, what we're gonna call the license plate. We've got the two doorknobs, the two side windows, the grill, the back windows, and the front windshield. It is available in instant digital download, which is a PNG file, or you can have her cut and ship them to you with free shipping. Again, you can find the link to her Etsy store in the description box below. I'm gonna hot glue the wheels to the truck because I want them to stay. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and place my wheels just like so. For the doors, we've got these farm fresh egg embellishments that we thought were really fun to add and a doorknob. For the grill, I'm gonna go ahead and place the grill that we designed to go on the front of this. We've got a couple of headlights here that we can place. Right, like so. And there is the back bumper. For the side windows, I wanted to frame them out with the wood. I didn't want to use a silver or a brushed metal, I guess. And so I'm just going to go ahead and place this right on some of my scrap pieces here. And I'm just going to go ahead and cut it out by hand. And I'm gonna hot glue these on just because why not? My glue gun is right here. There we go. And there we have, look at how cute this red truck is. Now, you know me, I am not gonna leave it like this. Come on now, this needs some distressing. If you wanna stop here and leave it as is, you can, but a red truck on a ranch, on a farm gets dirty. And so we need to rustic this up a bit, give it a bit of a dirty look. And to do that, to distress my truck, I will be using some of Tim Holtz Walnut Distress Ink. This stuff is amazing. It really helps give things that cool rustic look that I love. And it's a perfect shade of brown. This truck needs a wheel well. And so for the wheel well, I'm gonna go with a stiffer brush and I'm just gonna give it a shaded wheel well because I figured that would look awesome. All right, so we are all distressed and this red truck is looking as rustic as it can get with the red truck, the distress and the wood paneling, loving it. 
what am I gonna do with the back? Yeah, so easy and budget friendly. And taking some of these here, Dollar Tree daisies. I'm going with the white ones. Okay, seriously, look at how stinking cute this is. I love this red farmhouse truck. I think that it is so fun. It is super easy and budget friendly. Now let me show you some of my fails and what happened as I was doing the designing process of this truck. Fail number one, I tried to make it out of the foil cookie sheets from Dollar Tree. I thought that it would be really cool if I could make one that looked like corrugated or galvanized tin, only it just would not hold its shape. It wasn't durable. It was way too flexible. And I just really had a heck of a time getting the line straight. It wasn't easy to work with. The edges ended up being too sharp. And so this was an epic fail. Next fail. Tried to do it out of a cereal box thinking I could paint the cereal box because there was a printed side to the cereal box. Not only did the cereal box not work, but I just kept feeling like there was a flaw in my design. It didn't look proportionate. This whole front end was just not looking right to me. When I figured out that the hood needed to be shortened and it needed to be heightened a bit. And so after doing that, you can see the difference in the way that it looked. This was just way too long and too short. It was the same height as the bed. And so that's probably why it was looking so funny. And so once I made it up taller, got it closer to the windshield and it was taller than the bed, I was super happy with the way it came out. So a cereal box was definitely not the way to go. I would say that this too was an epic fail but through my experiences grows wisdom and I ended up perfecting my truck after this one here. Today, Kayla's bringing to you a clothing try-on clothes she picked up off of the online store, Sheen. This is hilarious. You gotta head over to see the cute clothes and the comedic spin that she puts onto this try-on. You can find the link to today's video, guess where? In the description box below. I honestly don't think that I can say I have a favorite out of the six that I made. And in the beginning, I told you, once you make one, you're gonna wanna make a lot because it really does get easier and you get faster at it. And I think from start to finish making one, it took me about a half hour to 45 minutes, which I don't think is bad for this outcome. I think it's well worth it. It's easy to do, just follow along with me, press pause, do what I'm doing, press play, and just keep going, and you're gonna get the same amazing outcome for this truck. Making these in different colors and different styles just really makes it more fun. I absolutely loved the wood paneling on this one, but when it came to this denim truck, I could not resist. Now, I do wanna tell those of you who are seeing this and seeing that it's denim, how did she do denim? There is a 12 by 12 denim paper pack that you can get on Amazon. They used to carry it at Joann's and it comes with two different shades of denim, a real light denim and this darker one. I think this was the perfect DIY to do using this denim because I just love the outcome. I mean, denim is farmhouse, right? It could be rustic and when you dirty it up the way I did, heck, why not? I hope you all enjoyed today's farmhouse truck DIY. Please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and let's get this video to 5,000 likes because like I always say, each and every one of your thumbs up and those comments that you do leave down below, they really do help my channel to grow and it helps YouTube to notice me just a bit more. Until next time, everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy crafting on a budget. Stay happy, stay safe, stay healthy, but most of all, stay positive, please.